Hello everybody and welcome to another painting video. In this one we're going to be taking a mountain jotner for the Nords from Conquest and we're going to be putting down what we're going to consider a quick uh, paint scheme using contrast paints uh, like a lot of the infantry and stuff as well that we've covered uh, with maybe just one or two steps added here and there just for a little touch of detail. But overall this is a pretty decent one. Uh, I say at the end of the video talking about um, processes so there's something, if there's anything I want you to take from this video, it's the process uh, of working with contrast paints, particularly on a larger model. You have to remember a certain thing, that when you put a colour down, before you put the next colour down, there has to be a tidy up step where you're using the base coats, uh, again like Wraithbone and Grace here, and you've always got to make sure that that is the step in between additional colours. Unless it doesn't matter so much, I guess it doesn't have to all the time. but. That's a process I want to be. I want you guys to be keeping in the fore of your your head while you're watching this video. Is that there's always a process, and the process helps get the end result looking better, and stops a lot of faffing around later on when you think, oh no, I've missed this bit or this bit isn't right. But anyway, enough of the uh, the rabble. Hopefully the lawnmower outside didn't distract you too much, and uh, let's get stuck in. So to begin with the Jotnar, uh, I took him to Prime, obviously, and what I started with was a Chaos Black spray, and what I did with that was make sure I got every nook and cranny uh, done in the black, because it has given us, uh, it lays down an initial shadow. After that, I went with some grey sear, uh, again with the aerosol, and sprayed pretty much face on to the miniature, so all the way around, face, face on and top down. And then we finished it off with a largely top-down spray of uh, Wraithbone. That way we've built up a, a shadow, a mid-tone, and a bit of a warm uh, upper area. So hopefully that should let our contrast paint do a lot of the work for us. So the first thing I want to do is look at the, his skin tone. And I'm going to go with Dark Oath Flesh because I've really been enjoying the, the end result I've been getting from this. So let's just get started and give all his skin uh, some of the Dark Oath Flesh. So with the Dark Oath Flesh down and dry, what I did as well off camera is go back over areas uh, that I'd overran with um, Wraithbone. So there was a bit of cloth here that I realised was actually cloth and not skin, so I went back over that and went back over some of the ropes and the bits that I just messed up a little bit, just to keep that tidy for the next step which is going to be picking out uh, different types of material on the clothing that he's wearing. So I have several different colours. I have Cygore Brown, Flesh Terror's Red, Gorgrunta Fur, and Liviadon Le 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 Blue. So <laughs> yeah, I had to struggle with that a little bit. So I'm just going to be picking out patches of colour that's going to go onto his clothing as well as onto the faces of the shields and the bits of armour that he sort of has on and then after that again off camera I will paint in again Wraithbone onto anything I've uh, overstepped. So let's just pick out a piece first with our Flesh Terror Red because I love Flesh Terror Red now. Huge fan of this colour as, as of one of my previous attempts or one of my previous projects. So I think it would be cool to have like this underneath thing in red. So there's a bit of it here and then this bit across his chest here. So we'll do that as one big uh, piece of cloth. But then after that, I'm just gonna break down and um, just pick out other areas with different colors. With all the colours down, we can see what um, what I'm aiming for here, which is a bit of a patchwork of different materials, but most of the colour uh, is um, Cygor, I think, no, not Cygor Brown, it's um, Gorgrunt of Fur, which is taking up the majority of this back piece here, and then a bit of Cygor in here. I changed my blue out from Lividian blue to Talisar blue because the Lividian was just too thin and just a, a little too dark at the same time. So after that was done, I went around the ropes and so on with um, some wraith bone, uh, just to tidy it up. I then took some uh, Ulthwan Grey and did in uh, some particular areas like his teeth, 
the edges and the centers of the shields and a couple of other spots just to, to make them a bit duller. There's another shield down here which has been done uh, the same way. So the next batch of colors to go down are going to be, so first off we're going to look at wood. We're going to get some wood to work on the tree. Uh, so we're going to be using some wild wood for that, another contrast paint. Basically all going to be contrast paint. Uh, so that'll be for the woodwork. Um, from then we're going to be looking at putting down some, let me see where is it, hang on, hang on, yep. So some Basilicanum Grey which is going to cover our metal parts because we have this cuff here with some chain. Uh, we have the centers and the edges of the shields and the spears up here on his shoulder. Same down here as well. So that'll be the second color I'm going to add. The third color I'm going to go for a, let me see, yeah I'm going to go for a black templar and that's going to be for his beard, facial hair and his hair, uh, the actual hair itself. Um, after that then there's also, I think there's probably some eyebrows to do in there as well, yeah so that'll be all black templar and after that's done I'm probably going to get a little bit of red and a little bit of uh, pink or possibly even yeah, I think I'm going to go with some Flesh Terrors Red. Uh, actually, no, do you know what? Skip it. We're, we're going to leave those to the next step. So for the meantime, we're going to focus on our Black Templar, our Wildwood, and our Basilicanum Grey, and we're going to get these done in stages. So, again, after each stage, I'm going to make sure that everything is fine. We're going to tidy up any areas that need to be tidied. But the first thing we're going to be doing is putting some wildwood down onto our tree. So wildwood's a very heavy pigmented contrast paint, but it's going to give a really nice finish. So we'll do all the woodwork first and then move on with my other two colors. So with that stage of color now down and drying, uh, we get a, a good idea of what this guy is going to look like now, um, particularly with the beard and stuff. He's a, a bit Warren-esque to be honest with you, <laughs> just a little Warren-esque. So what I want to focus on now is um, the, face, the facial details. So we want to get inside the mouth with a bit of colour and maybe get um, a little bit of black paint into those eyes. Uh, and then after that, we're basically got one more step and then we're, we're done. So. What I'm thinking of is, let me see, we want to start with the mouth. So I'm going to go with um, well, maybe pink or just, um, we'll go with a bit of um, Flesh Terrors Red again, I think. And we'll do this with a small brush because I don't want to um, taint the, the teeth too much with the colour. So what I need to do is to get right into the mouth with the red. A little bit like that. It's probably enough just to get the the tongue <laughs> sort of visible. Uh, we'll let that dry a couple of minutes, and while we're doing that, we will put some color into the eyes. We're going to be going with a regular paint, Abaddon Black, just to get some pupils into his eyes. So again, small brush, and let's see here. Let's have a look. Just a couple of eyes, and that really helps bring that face to life a little bit. So, what I'll do is wash my brush off real quick, and hopefully that um, red has dried. Yeah, because it was quite thin. So, the next step is going to be taking a little bit of Magos purple, and we're going to add a little bit of purple into that red mix. It worked on the Uta Raptor, so I'm happy enough to do that again. Get a bit of a, a sort of more interesting tone in there. Basically like that should do the trick. Just makes it look a bit more interesting. Now, onto the teeth. If I have some regular white paint, I'm gonna go with it. So I don't wanna shade the teeth too much. I think the old one gray is okay as it is. And what I'm going to try and do now is put some white scar into the teeth and just actually try and define the teeth. So again, we're going with a small brush, same brush. And all I want to do 
is pick out some of those teeth and I hope I can show at least some of this. Like the, the Jotnar is a very imposing miniature and you, it really does deserve a bit more attention even if you are doing a lot of contrast paint work on it it definitely deserves that little bit more attention uh, to detail on some parts of them. So let me see here how are we looking around the model I think everything else is pretty much fine nothing jumping out at me. So what we're going to do to um, basically wrap them all up is we're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this over everything that isn't his skin isn't these metal parts that are done in basilican and grey and just tone it all down because we have all these fur edges and stuff that we haven't done yet and I want skeleton hoard really to dull some of the, the brighter colours and also shade in the fur and the rope so it's going to be a case of getting a larger brush and just giving all of those parts of the model a good heavy coat of this. It's also going to count in for this because I'm not quite sure what this material is on his shoulder so I'm just going to go for it and uh, just see how it looks. It should work well on the likes of this blue here and just tone it down a little bit make it look a bit messy, a little bit dirty and should work wonders on the fur edging as well. So we'll give it a coat of that and if I'm happy with it I'm going to I will then go and give him a matte varnish and then paint the base black as usual and that will be the miniature done. If I'm not happy with it we'll come back and we'll talk about maybe a couple of subsequent steps or something like that. But for the most part this should be us finishing the miniature off. And here's our Jotner all complete. Uh, I decided not to go ahead and do any other steps, I just wanted to keep them nice and simple, get that matte varnish down, get the, the base blackened, and I think what we have as a result is something that's still quite bright, but even after all the, um, even after the layer of skeleton hoard, which really does dull certain places down, it looks really good on the rope and on the fur, but he still has that brightness about him. Not as much as he uh, as he did previously, but I think overall he is looking really good. I'm very happy with him. Uh, his face is a bit. I probably could have done something more with the eyes, but I don't think it's really a, a huge a huge issue. So all in all, I'm very pleased with him. I think anyone would be pleased to have that down on a tabletop. Of course because we've been using mainly contrast paints and stuff, there is always more steps you can do. A model is only finished when you're happy that it's finished. It's not because of covering every single detail. So this to me is finished to a uh, tabletop. You know, if I put this down the tabletop, I'd be happy to play it. Uh, and that's how I gauge what a tabletop standard is. If I look at it and think that's cool, I'm happy to put that down. I'll do that and that's my tabletop standard. Everyone else's standards is totally different or can be totally different. But in any rate, that is the Jotner finished and I am very happy with him. I think he looks great. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it too and maybe given you um, some ideas as not necessarily applications for contrast paint but the method and the process of it more than anything because I think a lot of complaints of contrast paint come from people not really having a process in mind for using it and remembering that every step you do there needs to be a little bit of a tidy up step before pushing on to the next color. Uh, that's that's if you're planning to do something with as many colors as you can fit it onto one model. But anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. Put your comments down below and I will see you again very soon. Hello everybody and welcome to what is not quite a painting video this time around but it is taking our uh, Jotner Nord, our Nord Jotner, uh, the giant, uh, from what I did in the previous video which was just do a lot of contrast work on it, just make it nice and simple and easy to follow. Uh, in this video we're going to be taking it a few steps further and I have him here uh, a few steps further on and I think he's become a proper centerpiece for the, the army now so there's a bit more detailing work going on 
uh, picking out a few things that I hadn't picked out in the previous one and then just upping uh, the detail and upping the highlighting a little bit on uh, certain parts of them. So I think he's turned out really well. You can let me know what you think at the end in the comments. So let's get stuck in. So coming back to the Jotner, after having finished it to what we would consider uh, my tabletop standard uh, using a lot of contrast paints, it's time to take this miniature and up its game a little bit. So we're going to start um, applying a few more details to him. So the first round of details I really want to do is a little bit of dry brush highlighting. Uh, that's primarily going to be on his clothing, the tree here and stuff like that. We might do a little bit on the skin as well. But the first thing we're going to do is work on the darkest patches of leather. So the stuff down here, the stuff that's on his, around his feet and stuff like that. We're going to give them a bit of a dry brush and we're going to be using some Vallejo Model Color Cavalry Brown for this. Kind of a reddy sort of a brown, very a red brown. And what that's going to do, if we can do it right and do it light enough, is that it'll just come up a little bit more like a cracked sort of a leather look. We're not wanting to go overly heavy with this, so let's have a look and see what we can do. You can see what that's doing to the raised parts and the edges makes it look a bit more interesting. And because at the end of the, the last run of work, uh, the initial paint work, because we put a matte varnish down over them, we're protecting that layer of contrast paints because contrast paint can rub off again. So now that we have the varnish down on it, we can actually go in again with this detail pass and not risk damaging the stuff we've done previously. And you can see this is coming up very nice, sort of a cracked, worn leather. Let's work around the other side of the foot here, or this foot. We'll not really get in there with the dry brush, but it gives that piece of material a little extra something. It makes it stand out a little bit more. So, with that done, we'll look at the next colour that I want to do. And I I think for this one, there's a dry brush colour I'm looking for and finding it in a pinch is a bit of a pain. I'm going to take some Vallejo weathered wood and I think I'm going to dry brush our more browny leather details with that. This is hopefully going to give me the same sort of subtle highlighting effect that the uh, cavalry brown did on the darker colors. So yeah, I don't think that's too bad. So probably should also do something on the shields as well. I think I'll actually go with the weather wood again uh, onto the shields. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be worth doing more of a stipple on the shields perhaps as well as a dry brush. So let's let's try doing a dry brush first on them. And that just edges and fades the colour a little bit. That's quite interesting looking quite nice. I think that ought to do. So let's clean the brush. So I think from this point we're going to move on to some uh, Praxetti White and I'm going to focus that on the furs and the rope. I think just to bring them up a little bit more and add a bit of a, a highlight to those. Now this is a very strong colour so making sure there's plenty of paint off the brush again will ensure a tidier finish. The main thing is just to not be afraid of just doing something else to the miniature and trying to bring up your detail a little bit even after you've done all your contrast paint work. So that will do for the Praxetic Light. <laughs> to get off my seat there. So we're going to go with Necron Compound, another great 
<coughs> great dry brush paint. And what we're going to try and, and what we're going to endeavour to do with this is edge the areas that we've done in Basilicanum Grey and give them a slightly more slightly more of a metallic look. So for example here on his cuff, let's see what this looks like. Certainly has a bit more of a metallic feel to it, which is good. So from there we can move on to perhaps our shields. Get a bit of a metallic highlight, a little bit of a glint going on them. So now we're going to move on to another dry brush, and this is going to be for his skin. And for this we're going to be going with Kislev Flesh. And this is just to really sort of tidy up the skin a little bit, because the um, the contrast paint, I did allow it to pull a little too heavily, and it's <clears throat> in certain places it's darkened the skin just a little too much for my liking. So we'll just get some of this onto a dry brush and just work on trying to brighten this up a little bit. So with the dry brushing on the skin done, what uh, what it's done is basically just give a bit of life to certain parts like down here, which are, was quite dull. We have a bit more highlighting around these areas here, around his muscles, a bit more around his feet and his arms, done a little bit over the shoulder and his back, and on the other arm as well. Now we haven't done anything on the face because I'm going to take the Kislev Flesh again, but I'm going to sort of hard edge it or you know add a bit more shading with a small brush or a bit more highlighting with a small brush. So what we have is a lot of these great raised details that we can just put a little layer of the Kislev onto. just to liven up the face a little bit more. And it's just going to be a case of just touching those higher detail points or those more interesting detail points with our smaller brush. I don't think that's too bad at all. So, from here, I think we're probably going to have to go back to the dry brush because we've ignored the tree, basically. We've ignored the, that entire big lump he's holding in that other hand. So, trying to figure out what, what to do with that. I'm thinking of maybe making it a bit more interesting than it is. So we'll start, oh, we'll start with a dry brush of Steel Legion Drab. I think would be a, a decent enough spot to begin because it brings up the tone of the tree a little bit more first and then we can hit it with a lighter one after that. So again just a case of getting our brush ready. And let's see what we can do here. So what this dry brush is doing is only really bringing the shade up a little bit and it's sharpening some of the highlights that the contrast paint has left. So from that point I'm okay, that's fine for the first run. We'll then go back to our Vallejo weathered wood and we will give the, the tree another hit of the weathered wood. Okay, so not too much of that, but the tree does look a bit more, I'm not really gonna say interesting because trees just, without their foliage and stuff, just aren't really that interesting, but there is more shading there is more highlighting in there that's a bit more prevalent which is nice so from there 
we are probably almost done, so I think there's maybe one couple more steps maybe I want to try. I think we'll go with a little bit of a highlight on his beard, and we're going to just use grey here for that, and actually make it look like he's got a few grey hairs floating around. <laughs> this is really only just to, to pick out some areas on the beard, just to brighten, or, and the hair, just to brighten up what we've already got. So for example there, focus on that part. Because it looks like it's actually catching a bit of light here, you know, it's quite broad. And then over the top, make that a bit brighter too. So I think that is pretty much it. I, I don't really want to <clears throat> push any further than that because if you start pushing further you could start making mistakes. However, a little bit more effort with some dry brushing, a little bit of highlighting here and there really does help. So is there anything I want to add just to wrap it up? Hmm? What do we think? I would say let's pick out the hairs on his arms. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous but maybe we should and maybe also pick out some of the veins. Uh, so Let's start with the veins, because what we do with the veins will be the same process we do um, with his hairs, except just in a different colour. So I'm going to go with uh, the contrast paint Gillum and Flesh, just to pick out his veins. And all I'm going to do with the veins, it's just put a bit of this over it and let's see what that does. It makes them a little more pinky. I think that looks okay. Now, for the hairs, I was thinking of taking some Black Templar and doing that. And not honestly sure that's going to work so well, but it might be worth a try. So let's have a let's have a go. So we're going to go with some Black Templar. is going to take a while. So with the Black Templar down on the arms, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's something else that's there. So the next thing I want to do is paint the stitching uh, on his clothing, and for the stitching I'm going to go with Mournfang Brown. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. Just a matter of getting a small brush And just, for example, on this piece on the shoulder, just paint that in. Just get these big stitches. Paint them in like that. So we're going to do that over all the stitches. Once those are dry, I'll then take a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade and just shade in that whole area uh, just to make it look a little bit darker. Now that we have everything done, I'm just going to explain what I did off camera. So as I was talking about, I was painting in the stitching up here, and then after that taking a bit of Agrax or shade and shading it down in a little bit so the, the stitching was a bit more prominent and had a bit of a shade in and around it. After that I decided I would put the Agrax onto the rope as well because it was blending too much with the, the fur and the other materials so I decided adding some Agrax to the rope would um, take away from the similarities of the, the colours. So you might see it a bit better on the back here 
see how that stitching has turned out and it's just added a little something else to it and I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. So all in all, after the Agrax was put down, I then gave him another coat of matte varnish through the airbrush and what that has done is just let everything stand out a little bit. So I really, really like how the leather work has turned out. It's uh, become very prominent. It's become a lot more noticeable. So the shape of the material and that, everything else has come out great. So that is basically a, a quick video on taking a miniature that was painted quickly with contrast paints and just adding a bit more to it. And this makes this guy, this um, Jotner, a bit more of a centerpiece for the collection or a bit more of a centerpiece for his army. So with that said and done, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Put your comments down below and uh, let me know what you think. So, and until next time, stay safe, take care, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.